in today's session of Divorce Court. Nanette Bernhard got the shock of her life when she caught her husband, Dwayne, with the babysitter. He's on top of the babysitter. Oh, goodness, we're busted. Nothing was going on, Your Honor. He was on top of her, Your Honor. But did he have his clothes on? I have no idea, really. You didn't snatch the covers off? No, I walked out. <laughs> what was the point of you being on top of the babysitter? When he gets drunk, his other thing talks more than his brain does. You did something that you wanted to do that you probably didn't get the nerve to do it until you got a little alcohol. Nanette Bernhard says good riddance to Dwayne Bernhard in today's session of Divorce Court. All rise. Court is now in session. Maybelline Ephraim presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is the matter of Nanette Bernhard versus Dwayne Bernhard. And I'm advised that your plans for a college career didn't come to fruition as promised by your husband, and now you want a divorce? Yes, ma'am. He's also a cheating fool. I mean, he made what us What's that quit smirk on your face? He makes me quit. He makes me quit school, makes me get a full-time job, and then I come home from working all night at 7 a.m. in the morning, and I find out he's on top of the babysitter. Nothing was going on, Your Honor. She oh, walked oh, somebody's that, bad joke. It was somebody's bad joke. Your Somebody, bad joke, I say. No, ma'am. He goes, oh, goodness, we're busted. And nothing happened, of course, right? No, ma'am. We were fully clothed. Yeah, right. Because she interrupted it before no, it could happen? Yeah, nope, right. we were fully clothed. We come out, and I come out in my jeans and my boots. What was, was the point of you being on top of the babysitter? I was getting up out of bed. I was rolling out of bed. It wasn't, I wasn't even on top of the babysitter. Come on. You were on top of the babysitter when I walked in. Why was the babysitter in bed with you in the first place? We had a You're party not the at the baby. house. We had, the, <laughs> we had a party at the house that night. Everybody was... You know, getting pretty well drunk and having fun, playing games, oh, and it was the butt of somebody's bad joke. She who's walked bad in. Joke? One of our friends that put us in there. Oh, the friend put you in the bed? Oh, come on. They, they, they all left at 1 o'clock in the morning, Your Honor. Well, you weren't well, there. Were there. You don't really know what time they left. I was on the phone. What, what are you talking about? Your friend, a friend put you in there. You're telling, trying to tell this court <laughs> that somebody lifted your big old self up and put you in the bed and the babysitter? No, probably helped us walk in there. And why would they do that? I was just to play a joke on us. Your Honor, he's lying. He told oh. me when I got in oh, there. Oh, come on now. He, he told me when he got in, when I got in there, that oops, were busted. And he told me that they got drunk and they decided to, to, to get back at me, they would go to bed together. Oh, now, What does he mean by uh, getting back at you? What, did you had, what had you done? I hadn't done nothing. So he just oh, wanted no, to get back no. at you for nothing? That Your doesn't Honor, make what sense I'm saying, what I'm saying is I had asked him the night before not to get drunk you never because asked me when, anything. He, when he gets no. drunk, who's the one that his, always goes out and gets drunk on the weekend? Let me finish. Let his her finish. other thing talks more than his brain does, and I knew that. So when I told him not to oh, okay. drink, get right. drunk, to do, he'll do stupid things. What does he do? He ends up in bed with her. So when you left that night, did you leave her there? Yes, ma'am. Did you know there was going to be a party at your house? Not at that time, no. Oh, so he had a, had a party without your knowledge as well? Oh, no. Yes, ma'am. What type of party? Was the party all of a sudden, too, and somebody's joke, Mr. Bernhardt? No, ma'am. So how did you have a party and your up? wife didn't know? Friends show up at Friends 11 o'clock at night. Friends what do you up. expect? They had been there since 8 o'clock that evening. Oh, come on. They had been there since all 8 o'clock that Hold evening. it, hold it. I need some order. I'm sorry. Now, I don't need a yelling and screaming match. That's not what this is all about. Now, if you want to put on some boxing gloves, put them on somewhere else, but not in this courtroom. Yes, ma'am. When, when I'm talking, one of you has to be quiet. Both of you, when I'm talking. Now, what type of party was this that your wife didn't know about? Everybody had showed up about 8 o'clock. Just friends to come over to talk, you know, have fun, and just basically sit there and talk with both of us. And it progressed into just having fun, playing games, card games. I get so sick of people trying to make me think that I don't know anything about what a party is. That's a party. And adults party. just sit up and talk and drink. That's what you were doing? We sent a drink and party and having fun. You know, it progressed And the fun on. went on to the bedroom. Well, like I said, we just, it, we happened to end up in there. Don't know how, don't know why. You're an adult. You're not in control of your body. You're not in control of your behavior <laughs> and your you conduct. Drink. 
Excuse me? Not when you drink. Oh, so you that's your excuse. Well. You know, I call that an excuse. You're still in control. You know why? You're in control of how much alcohol you consume, and that's your decision to make. Mm -hmm. And so if you chose to consume too much to the point where you didn't know what was going on, that's still your fault. There's no excuse and no justification. You're yes, an adult. If you can't control what goes into your mouth, who else can? <laughs> so now try another one. It's, you did something that you wanted to do that you probably didn't get the nerve to do it until you got a little alcohol. That's what usually happens. No, oh, ma'am, I'm still staking to say it was somebody's bad joke. Now what else is going on? He's saying that, that you, you, you just busted them and nothing had happened. And you just jumped the gun. You caught him before anything happened. You moved too fast. You should have come home at 9 o'clock instead of 7 o'clock. Your Honor, uh, besides the babysitter, you know, there's a quit in the school. I mean, he made me quit school. I never made you quit school. What do you oh. mean he made you quit school? Oh, he made me oh. quit school. We your, made a your deal. Career. We, you, you always wanted we to be made a deal that the if I went to school to full time, home. that I wouldn't have to work. So then why did you have to go back to work full time? Because of everything else that was going on. What's everything else? Well, for one, there was the medical bills for the children. We had, uh, we have a child with asthma. We had another child that was having seizures. And that's, that's final, that, that final. I mean, she doesn't have seizures anymore. But we had to take her to specialists. And we didn't have insurance at that time. The bills came along. They started piling in on us, and that's what got him worried, and that's what made him make me go back to full time. So then, Mrs. Uh, Bernhardt, it doesn't sound like he made you go back to school full time. I mean, go back to work full time. It sounds like circumstances in life and your financial conditions made you have to go back to work as opposed to going to school full time. If you have how many children? Three. Three children, one with asthma, one with seizures, no health insurance, medical bills piling up, it was your circumstances that made you have to go to work full time. Not Mr. Bernhardt, why are you blaming him? In essence, you're blaming the kids. If they hadn't gotten sick, the medical bills wouldn't have gotten high. If he had had a different job, you perhaps would have had health insurance. But no, you knew you didn't have health insurance driver. when you started school, right? Because he's a reckless driver. That but was you, the other thing. But you knew you didn't have health insurance when you started school. No. Did you know that? Yes. So then that's not his fault. And see, that's what's causing the divorce, because you want to push the blame. And in marriage, sometimes, when our finances don't, aren't as, as well as we would like them to be, you can't do exactly what you want to do as a parent, because you have to meet your parental responsibilities. You had to go back to work because you needed the money for your household, and one income was insufficient. And now you blame him for it. It's not his fault. It's life. No, uh, Your Honor, what I blame him for is he doesn't want to pay the bills that we, we've culminated together. That's what I blame him for. He says he was paying the bills. He's not paying the medical bills. He hasn't touched the medical bills. Is he paying any of the bills? He pays, what, his house payment after he kicked me out of the house. When Divorce Court returns, the judge questions Nanette about another man in her life. I had no other man as far as physically or mentally I was attracted to, no. So who's the man that bought your car? No, I had another man that sold me the car. No, that's not what you said, well, Mrs. Bernhardt. that's Bernhard. what I meant, Your Honor. He was a friend that you only talked to. Yes. Same as the babysitter that he just only ended up he in the bed with. He was on top of her, Your Honor. If you would like to have the judge hear your case in divorce court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or email us at www.divorcecourttv.com. Divorce court is back in the case of Nanette Bernhardt, who says her husband Dwayne kicked her out of their house after she found him in bed with a babysitter. Mr. Bernhardt, did you kick your wife out of the house? No, ma'am. So again, you're saying that this was her decision? It was her decision to leave. Did she, when did she leave? After she saw you in bed with the babysitter? No, ma'am. When she did she leave? She let it go on for uh, apparently two or three more months because she started seeing somebody after, uh, or talking, as she says, to somebody for two months before she left me. Well, if you were just laying on top of somebody and wasn't doing anything, now certainly you can believe she was just talking. Yeah. That's hard for you to believe, though. Yeah. So she... So you distrust her and she distrusts you? Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, I took off yes. for three days. I come back. He's pressuring me. He's saying, Do you, what, have you thought? Have you thought? And I said, yeah, I've thought. And, and he said, what, you want a divorce? Get the hell out. And he broke all our wine glasses. He, uh, he broke 
our marriage, that we had a photo album of us being married. He broke that. He shattered everything. Of course, after that, you know, there's nothing to stay for. So I got out like he told me just to. Just because the wine, gla the wine the glasses were broken glasses. And, the, and the... Our wedding glasses. Right. Just because he broke those, there was nothing to stay for? No. So when you told him you needed three... it was over. He said it was over, and he said, get out, and I got out. So when you, you told him you needed three days to think, some time to think, that turned out to be three days, what were you thinking about? I was thinking about our life. Whether you were going to be with him. Whether well, I was going to be with him oh, or okay. if what the children... I was thinking of the children. We fight constantly, Your Honor. And what was going tell. on in your circumstances that you needed time away from home to think about it? We were arguing all the time. I had my seven-year-old daughter go to my, my mother and tell her, Grandma, I'm confused. How can I help my mommy and daddy? They work all the time. They sleep during the day. And when they're up or when they're off, they fight. They're fighting. What a way to run a house. And the seven-year-old had enough sense to go ask somebody, what can I do to help my two adult parents? Exactly learn how not to argue and, and when, fight all the time and adjust their lives. When my mother told me that she said that, I felt, okay, well, I better think about this relationship. And I left for three And months. did you have somebody else that kind of helped you along in your thought I process? I had several people. Several different people? Females. Oh, he know. said you had another man. No, please. Male. You didn't have anybody else? No. Yeah. No other man in your life when you left him? I had, I had the one that bought my car, but that's it. So is no, that, it's, it, we is that a no, yes or a no? No. I had no other man as yeah, far okay. as physically or mentally attract, uh, I was attracted to, no. Okay. So who's the man that bought your car? You let it slip. I bought the car. You said I had another man that bought my car. No, I had another man that sold me the car. No, that's not what you said, well, Mrs. Bernard. Well, that's Bernhard. what I meant, Your Honor. I bought the car with $1,000. I think you ought to mean what you say and say what you mean, and you didn't say that. Now, did he buy you a car no, or did you buy did. the car from him? I bought him? the car from him. And why did you say you had him? Because I could talk to him. He was a friend that you only talked to? Yes. Same as the babysitter that he just only ended up he in the bedroom. He was on top of her, Your Honor. He said he was fully clothed. Oh, please. The covers was over him. But did he have his clothes on? I have no idea, really. You didn't snatch the covers off? No, I walked out. <laughs> you walked out? I walked out. Now, what's, what's she telling me about the bills, the medical bills for your children that you refused to pay? Never refused to pay him. I always thought she was paying on him. Oh, here oh. we go. Why did you think that she was paying? Because, uh, well, when I was making the money, I was giving, I was paying the rent and everything else, and what money we had left, I'd say, here, you know, this is what we can pay on this one this month. Did you have enough left to pay them all? Nope. No. So then why did you think she was paying them if you didn't have enough left? Then I know. Just assume. You thought the money was just falling from the sky? Yeah. So how much were the medical bills, that Mr. Bernhardt? They come in at different amounts. Some were $60, some were maybe $100, some were a little bit higher. Constantly our... accumulating, though, right? Yes. Well, Funny joke that, that somebody is playing, right? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> is this the folder containing the medical bills? Those are the folders containing half the medical bills. We have over 30000 worth of medical bills, but I can only rummage up like $13,485. That's just over three years. What is your attitude about it? I thought they were being paid. I thought they were being paid. Okay, now you know they're not being paid. Yes, ma'am. So now what? Whatever you decide. Whatever Provides, I say? If I, you decide I should pay them, I'll pay them. I still think I should still pay some of them anyways. So you have to wait for me to tell you to meet your no, responsibility. Is that what you're telling me? No, ma'am. I know what my responsibilities are. If I've kept my responsibilities, it's her that hasn't kept her responsibilities. Right. Why do you say she hasn't kept hers? Because, like I said, she walked out on this relationship. She walked out on everything. She left me, when she left for those three days, she left me with no money, no money for food in my house, and I had my three kids and no transportation. She left you with the babysitter. You had a babysitter. No, the babysitter was gone at that time. Oh, the I babysitter had left by then, too? I sent her home. Oh. Uh, when did you do that? Uh-uh. When did you send the babysitter home? The day after we got into the big fight. She <laughs> went home. I told her it's time to cool off. She needed to go home. Cool off? You weren't doing anything. Why was she hot from? I was, it was me that needed to cool off. Time for you to cool off. Because I was so, I was. So your little tail was hot. <laughs> Yep, because after the three days, she walked in. She said, basically, it's over. She didn't love me no more. She had fell out of love. Uh, and Who she said wanted this, your divorce. wife or the babysitter? My wife. <laughs> so that's when you told the babysitter to go home? I told her to go. Well, after everything got smashed, yes. Oh, so, so you came to, to your sister. Cool she said, wait a minute. We got to cool this off, because now my wife is about to leave me. Hmm. I got to think about this. Then you decided to do a little thinking yourself. Is that what you're telling me? I guess so. Then your lights came on.
and you realize what was happening with your marriage. Kind of late. Yep. Now, how did you say there are 30,000, but you could only find 13,000 worth of bills to they were uh, at verify? His house. And so the, the, those are the ones that I collected from him. I've kept all of them. Every one of those bills I've gotten, I have kept. So, oh, you're just keeping them. <laughs> well, I think the doctors would Filing, be really happy if you just Putting them, them in the file to try to get them to where if I had enough money to pay something on some of them, I'd pay some. <laughs> They're in my name. Uh, Mr. Bernhardt, let me tell you, in our society, the way we do things, when bills come to us, we don't keep them. It's not a keepsake. Mm -hmm. We usually write a check or take some cash down well, somewhere and pay on the bill. If I had the That's money or the cash to, to do it, I'd have done it. So you just kept them and let them pile up, hoping they'd go away at some point. When divorce court returns, the judge renders her verdict. You simply have to work and go to school, but it can be done. I did it with three children. You can do it too. And an update on the case of Lena Wheeler versus Cameron Wheeler. Come home, I have about 20 to 30 messages from him. Oh, I hate you, you're a bitch. You're let, me, let me hear this tape. I hate you. I hate everything about you. Divorce court is back and the verdict is in. In the case of Nanette Bernhardt, who's divorcing her husband, Dwayne, after she caught him in bed with the babysitter. How are your children now? They're doing good. Does anybody have health insurance now? Yes. I do. They all three do. So both of you have health insurance no. now? No. He has I insurance do. on them. I have insurance on them. Good. And is your plan 100% coverage or? Uh, as a deductible, which is mostly what those are, is the deductibles. The court's order is that all of the bills that have been accumulated for medical expenses mm -hmm. during the marriage and even afterward, if they were for the benefit of the children, each of you is responsible for half. Mrs. Bernhardt, I'm sorry you had to go back to work, but sometimes that's what we have to do when we have children. You got to think about going to college before you have three children, maybe. And now that you have them, they're your priority. So you simply have to work and go to school, but it can be done. I'm living proof. I did it with three children. You can do it too. Yes, Good luck to you. That's the court's order. Court's adjourned. When divorce court returns, an update on the case of Lena Wheeler versus Cameron Wheeler. He's causing so much damage in my apartment, so I'm on the verge of being kicked out. Instead of me hitting her, I hit the wall. If you would like to have the judge hear your case in divorce court, Call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or email us at www.divorcecourttv.com. And now for an update on a previous case in divorce court. Lena Wheeler said she wanted to divorce her husband Cameron because she was afraid of his violent temper. He's kicked over tables and broke them. He's thrown phones like friends. So now he's phone. playing Mike Tyson. He's causing so much damage in my apartment, so I'm on the verge of being kicked out. Instead of me hitting her, I hit the wall. You, yes, you are punching holes in walls, yes, destroying the property, mm -hmm. yelling and screaming, about to get her put out of the place, oh. and all you can say for it is she made me do it? But Lena says that Cameron's harassing phone calls were the biggest problem. I come home, I have about 20 to 30 messages from him. He's just so unstable. One minute he'll call, oh, can we get back together? Then he'll call mm -hmm. right back. Oh, I hate you. You're a bitch. You're let, me, let me hear this tape. I hate you. I hate everything about you. It's my turn. I'm gonna get down and dirty. Do you know what that's called? A threat. Now, you say you don't need counseling. Yes, you do. Lena said Cameron had caused more than $600 worth of damage to their apartment. The judge ordered Cameron to pay for the repairs. Lena says she is working very hard to save money so that she and her children can move into a new home. Cameron is living with his sister and sees his son every other day. I didn't do it, and I'm going to stick to the fact because I never did sleep with the babysitter. It, it hurt me. I didn't think my husband could stoop so low to sleep with the nanny in, in, in my bed. I have to pay at least half the medical bills, which I never did say I wasn't going to pay any of them. Uh, the only thing I'd like to say to Dwayne is I hope he pays his half of the bills. I don't know if I'll ever get married again.